Well, hi, Brain Janie here, Allegro Piano Service in lovely Fallbrook, California. And I'm here today to talk about the soundboard, the piano, and how it's made, how it works, and things to look out for when you're thinking about a piano that you might be considering. The soundboard of a piano is very similar, really, to the top of, like, this thing. This is a viola. Um, and you can see that this has like what's, it has a little bit of a, a crown or a rise in the middle where the strings come across. And uh, what basically is going on there is very similar to what it is that takes place in a piano because a piano has uh, these spruce planks that have been glued together and there's bridges that go across them that the strings travel across that vibrate and allow it to make sound. Now the, the manufacturing and the things that go into a soundboard are incredibly interesting, even how the wood is harvested. You know, when they basically are looking for trees to consider their old growth spruce trees, they're looking for trees that have are at a particular elevation. They want them up away from water sources, the ones that they're gonna use to make soundboard planks. They want them to be harvested in the dead of winter when there is the least amount of moisture content. They even make sure that they harvest them during particular moon phases so that they're, uh, when they are cut down, they are at their lowest level of moisture so that when they're going through the milling and uh, manufacturing processes, that wood is not going to be inclined to twist, turn, or move around because that's basically what happens when there's moisture in the wood. When they take the, the tree, they slice it up into planks, they lay them together to match, they glue them up, they put ribs on them basically to hold the planks together, and then when they get it all glued up, then they will take the, the soundboard in its raw form and they will put it in something called a hot box. And a hot box, or it's basically just a heated room where it removes all of just about all the moisture from the wood. They bring it all the way down to like maybe four or five percent moisture content if they can. And then when it is in that state, actually when it is even still warm, that's when they will take and then put it into the piano. And they will bolt it all together and, uh, you know, put it into the spot it's supposed to be, glue it down, and when it's in, in the factory or the shop or whatever, it suddenly now is exposed to a higher relative humidity, and the soundboard then basically crowns, because the wood begins to accept and receive the moisture that's in the atmosphere around it. And that release and retaining of moisture is basically what causes a piano to go out of tune is because it shrinks when it gets dry, it swells when it gets humid, and that's why all the piano makers basically recommend that you tune a piano every six to nine months or so to make sure that, you, that it keeps up with that cycle of the shrinking and swelling and the movement of the wood. Now, when you, if you ever come across the piano and there's concern about the piano soundboard having cracks, realize what's going on there. If the piano soundboard has cracks, that means that that piano has been exposed to some extreme dryness. And that can come in the form of uh, perhaps a piano has been in some part of the country where the relative humidity in the homes, like during the winter months, they turn the heat on, it's already super cold outside. And uh, for a guy like myself that grew up in the Midwest, you know, the relative humidity in houses during the winter months is super low. And uh, if a piano is in that sort of environment and there's not any concern about its uh, moisture, there being some moisture in the air for it, basically that wood can be reduced back down to what it was when it was manufactured. And that's when those planks begin to come apart is because it's been exposed to that sort of dryness. A piano being frozen is also a super bad thing. That also is something that can reduce the relative humidity and the moisture and the wood content or a piano that's been left in a garage and exposed to the elements pretty much inside of a garage. That's also another situation where a piano can be badly damaged because the relative humidity and moisture in the wood basically allows it to become very weak and then it comes apart. 
So if you're ever considering a piano um, and you're concerned about its age or whether or not the soundboard is in good shape, there's a lot of different things that guys that are in my trade know how know what to look for, know what to, to, to observe in it to make sure that it's in sound condition. So if you're ever wanting to chat about a piano you're considering or concerned about the health of your soundboard, feel free to give me, you know, be in contact. You can reach me over my website. My phone numbers and contact information are there. It's pianoserviceandrepair.com. Again, pianoserviceandrepair.com. That's all spelled out. And I can certainly have a conversation with you about what it is you're considering and the age of the piano and perhaps what it is that uh, might be going on with the soundboard and the piano. So, Thanks for watching. I hope this is helpful in understanding the soundboard in a piano. Cool.